In the last video we looked at the BSA 300 watt generator, removing the cylinder barrel and regrinding the valves so we actually had some compression. There was also a missing part in the air filter to refabricate, and we took a quick look at the carburetor along the way. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. Next it was time to check for a spark, and unsurprisingly there was none. So I've removed the starting rope pulley, and I've knocked up a puller so I can remove the flywheel. I didn't have any longer bolts with the correct thread for the flywheel, so I've made my puller in two sections, but it should work just the same. So I'll apply some tension, and then give the puller bolt a tap, which will hopefully free up the flywheel. That was easier than I thought. OK, we're in, and the points are looking pretty grubby, so I'll clean those in a moment. I'll also apply some fresh oil to the cam lubricating felt while I've got it in pieces. You'll probably have loads of people tell you different ways you should or shouldn't clean your points, but I've always used some fine wet and dry paper wrapped around a bit of stiff card, and it's never failed me yet. Famous last words. I'll pop the flywheel back on and see if that's got our spark back. I checked the points with a multimeter and they're now making contact as they should be. So, here goes. Nope, still no spark. OK, I'll pop the flywheel back off and check things a bit more thoroughly. This time I'll check everything, starting with the condenser. I'd expect something like 0.25 microfarads, and that's reading 348 nanofarads, in other words 0.35 microfarads, so that's close enough for me. I did spot another issue though. The points appear to be shorting to ground in the open position when I move them slightly, so I think there's a problem with one of the insulators. And now I've removed the points, the insulator on the post was completely missing, and this tab on the points can come into direct contact with the back plate, so I'll make myself up a new insulator. And there's my new insulator, made out of a bit of plastic, so I'll pop the points on and check that there's no shorting to ground, and give it a good jiggle, and that's sorted. I'll just wind it round to the closed position and reconfirm that the points are making a good contact as they should be. And that's fine, so I'll go and find a new split pin and then we can call that bit done. Now to check the coil. The primary is reading around 1 ohm, which is somewhere around what I'd expect. I don't know the exact specification for this magneto, but that looks ok to me but the secondary was reading as an open circuit, even when I set the meter to the correct range. I'd expect something like, say, 8 to 12k, or thereabouts, but definitely not an open circuit. However, although it's never a good sign, a coil can continue to work when there's a break in the secondary winding, depending on where that break is. One of my petters has a break somewhere in the secondary winding, and it's still running six years later. The spark can leap the 30 thou gap of the spark plug, so it's not going to worry about a hairline break somewhere near the end of the winding. One thing's for sure though, it's not going to magically fix itself, and the coil will eventually fail completely. I have a replacement on standby for my PETA. My plan for the BSA is to get the engine running, if I can, and then think about the coil later. I'll just check the resistance of the plug lead while I'm here. I've no idea what's in that bulge in the middle of the lead, but I'll assume that just under 10k is ok for now. So just to prove that point, and here's our spark. It's a bit weak, and the engine might be a pig to start, but it should run enough to confirm that everything is working. I'm just in the process of draining the oil. The level was a bit low, but it's not too dirty. I'll give it another oil change once I've run it for a while to stir up any grime in the bottom of the sump. 
I've also flushed out the fuel tank several times, so we're not so far away from getting the engine running. Or at least attempting to get it running anyway. So, in with some fresh OMD 110 oil. The OMD, apparently standing for Oil Mineral Detergent, and I believe the specification is more or less the same as SAE 30. I've had a quick look at the generator. The insulation on some of the wires has perished, but it's not shorting anywhere, so it'll do for testing. The brushes are in good shape, and I've cleaned the commutator while I had it apart. I also straightened the cooling fan, which was pretty badly distorted and catching on the cowling. So, in with a bit of fuel. It'll need quite a bit to get it up to the outlet pipe due to the large footprint of the tank. Anyway, that should be enough for now. I'll replace the cap and not forget to open the vent screw, otherwise that'll impede progress somewhat. And set the rear stat down to its off position so it's not attempting to generate any electricity. And pull out the choke. I could run without any exhaust, but the flexible pipe will reduce the noise a little bit, so I'll pop that on for now. And we're ready for attempt number one. Time to place your bets. Will it start? Ok, you might have noticed that the engine did fire on a few of those attempts, and it did that many more times when the camera wasn't rolling, but in each case it sounded pretty muted, like the spark was too retarded. So I'll pop the flywheel off again and adjust the timing. I was pretty suspicious when I first looked at the adjustment that it was set hard against the end stop. Usually you'd expect there to be some adjustment in both directions, so I'll set it right in the middle and give it another go. And of course I didn't film the first attempt after I'd adjusted the timing, but the engine fired several times with a much more healthy sounding pop from the exhaust. But once I'd set up the camera it refused to play again. And again, just as a sanity check, we're still getting a spark, albeit not the fattest spark I've ever seen, but a spark nonetheless. We're actually on to a different day now, and as before, when the camera wasn't rolling, the engine has fired and run for about 30 seconds or so. Enough for the governor to kick in and demonstrate that it's working correctly. It's quite possible that I'm fighting multiple issues here. I know that I've got a fairly weak spark, which definitely won't help things. When I had the cylinder head off, I forgot to note where top dead centre was, so I still don't know how well the spark is timed, but I'd expect it to be roughly right. Additionally, there is a non-return valve at the bottom of the fuel pipe in the petrol tank, the idea being that once you've pulled the engine over with the choke closed, the fuel will remain primed up to the carburettor ready for the next attempt, but that return valve isn't sealing that well, so it might need to draw fuel up the pipe in every attempt. Ok, I've made my life a little easier by screwing the engine down to the scaffold boards that it's sitting on. As ever, the engine started and ran for quite a few seconds when I hadn't got the camera set up. I've found that it tends to have a better chance if I remove and dry the spark plug. The 
that's the best firing I've caught on camera so far, but then it just gets stubborn again after that. So back out with the spark plug and give it another quick clean and try again. First pull with the choke out to draw some fuel up into the pipe and then another go with the choke in. And it runs. Well, sort of. Not long after this, the engine ran for another 30 seconds or so, but then it was completely dead and there was no spark at all, so the coil has now officially given up. I've taken the coil off and ordered a roll of the correct diameter wire to rewind it, but that will more than likely be a massive voyage of adventure and discovery, so I'll save that for another video. What I can do in the meantime is make up a silencer to go on the end of the flexible pipe. I've gathered some suitable materials, so here's a short silencer component fabrication montage. And finally I have a kit of parts. This flange will be welded onto the inlet pipe and the threaded bit will screw into the union on the end of the flexible pipe. Then this section will be welded onto the flange, like so. The exhaust cast will go in through this pipe and pass up into the top of this chamber, where it will hit a blanking plate welded on the top there. So it will then bounce back down, exiting through the holes at the bottom. This whole assembly will be inserted into the main barrel of the exhaust, so the exhaust exiting those holes will pass up the gap between the inner chamber and the outer barrel, remembering that there's a blanking plate on the top here. It'll then get to this next section which will have another baffle inserted in there, and that section will be welded on the top. And finally we have the exit plate where the exhaust gas will come out. I'll spare you having to watch me weld it together, and I'll return in a minute with the completed product. And here it is. It's all gone together quite nicely. I'll just remove that old sticker and give it a quick rub down before applying a coat of paint. It'll still need a second coat, but that's more or less what it'll look like when it's finished. 
That's about it for this video. In the next episode I'll work on the coil, hopefully doing a successful rewind and then maybe we can actually see the engine running at last. If you've enjoyed watching please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when a new video is released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.